Hi Leos and happy birthday to July Leos, okay? So in this video I'm going to talk about uh, the transits in July and we have an interesting month ahead of us so let's see what the stars are up to in July. Uh, the month begins with the conjunction of uh, Sun and Mercury on the 8th degree of Cancer. Technically this conjunction happened on June 30th but in my uh, June horoscope I uh, mistakenly said it's gonna happen on July 1st but yeah. Uh, I apologize for the mistake. So uh, on July 1st, uh, they are still close and this conjunction happened in your 12th house. 12th house is our subconscious. Mm. So yeah, maybe like uh, you had some like realization about your subconscious uh, behavioral patterns, I guess. Um, yeah, because Mercury is thought uh, and Sun is like uh, our conscious mind. So and in your subconscious mind uh, house uh, you get the idea you realize uh, something like uh, about your subconscious behavior yeah the things we do on autopilot without even realizing but like with this conjunction you're gonna be like oh okay wait yeah like oh i didn't know i did i did this or like that's how i behave or something like that uh, and it's not too bad it's a good conjunction uh, and now on july 3rd we have a full moon in capricorn uh, for Leo's, that is your sixth house. Uh, sixth house uh, is uh, the house of work. It's our routine. It's our health house. Uh, it's also our pet. Okay, so those themes are gonna be illuminated somehow, mm, and the sun is gonna be in your twelfth house. Um, so uh, that can mean you need to kind of find the balance between work and uh, rest. Okay. Uh, Make sure you get enough rest uh, and a uh, full moon um, this full moon is not bad actually uh, remember the full moon that happened in Sagittarius in June that one was intense because uh, there was this uh, t-square aspect actually two of them in the sky on that day and it was really intense uh, I don't know about you guys but like I personally felt it like three days after the full moon and I'm sure everyone felt it I'm sure you guys felt it as well in early June but this time in July this full moon is not bad because it's making uh, only positive aspects so the full moon uh, the full moon is gonna make a trine to Jupiter in Taurus uh, and it's gonna make a sextile to Saturn in Pisces remember Capricorn is ruled by Saturn so when the ruling planet makes a positive aspect it means it's a good influence it's like a good omen yeah and so your sixth house maybe you were working on some project and now like you will complete it it's gonna be minor because uh, this full moon is not a lunar eclipse uh, so it's not gonna bring some like major culminations major endings no it's gonna be like something minor and even though it's minor it means it's uh, stable it, uh, your life is not gonna turn upside down which is good right um so yeah and uh, normally during full moons we feel um, emotional, irritable, on the edge, like moody, uh, okay, we feel like crying, but like because this full moon um, is making positive aspects, uh, I guess uh, it's gonna be uh, like felt in this way, like uh, think of it like as tides, uh, ocean tides. When there's full moon, like there's lots of water on the beach, right? Um, I think it's called like high tide. Uh, I don't know. M English is not my native language, so I don't know the correct term for it. Um, so yeah, you get the idea. And since we are 80% water, uh, it means like uh, our emotions are full as well. And at this full moon, like uh, we're gonna feel like uh, emotional, but in a positive way because uh, it's making positive aspects. And this full moon is happening right before July 4th. So we might be in a, like a mood to celebrate, like a time to get together with our family and like, yeah, enjoy life, so like uh, enjoy emotions. Mm, so yeah, uh, now mm, on July 6th, uh, we have this T-square uh, involving the moon, uh, Venus, uh, Mars and Uranus. Yeah, like uh, T-squares are a bit tense. But the thing is, uh, it's, this is going to last for only one day because uh, the moon moves quickly. It, uh, it spends only like two days and a half in one sign. So yeah, you're going to feel this effect for only one day. 
So yeah, on July 6th, uh, try to be patient with yourself or with others because uh, people might be like a bit like on edge. Uh, yeah. And then on July 9th, we have the last quarter moon in Aries uh, on the 17th degree of Aries. What do last quarter moons mean? It means uh, it's time to start uh, wrapping things up that were started uh, with the Gemini new moon in June. Okay, take this week uh, after July 9th to recharge your batteries to kind of like get ready for the new moon in Cancer. Yeah, so let yourself relax. Don't uh, waste energy trying to start something new, trying to uh, make things happen. Yeah, uh, you should start new things after the new moon. Uh, like I'm going to give you an example, like uh, like my mini epic fail. In May, like I was having some problems, and like uh, be because I was in panic, uh, I completely forgot about the transit, and I was trying to start something. Like uh, I found some project uh, that I could work on, and I packed all of my stuff. I was ready to go, but somehow like uh, I couldn't go. I couldn't find a way to get there, and then like. Um, uh, the, because of the delay, the other person uh, ended up canceling that project. So yeah, and then when I looked at the transits, I was like, oh, I was trying to start something before new moon, like a week before new moon. So yeah, uh, don't repeat my mistake. Don't waste energy trying to make something happen, okay, before new moon. It's not gonna, like, work. Yeah, so uh, that's what I wanted to mention with the last quarter moon. Uh, so after July 9th, uh, rest, okay, for one week. And, and then on July 10th, uh, Mars enters Virgo until August 27th. Uh, Mars has been in your sign uh, since uh, like late May. Yeah, so it must have, uh, it must have given you energy um, because Mars is an energizing planet. It's like the engine uh, of the airplane that makes airplanes fly. Yeah, so you get the idea. So you must have been uh, active, uh, energetic, uh, and now uh, the money moves into your s uh, money, not money, Mars moves into your money house. So yeah, you, you might get more active about like earning money, mm -hmm. mm, working harder to earn money. Uh, yeah, so, and it's gonna be in there until uh, August 27th. Next, uh, July 11th, we have Mercury entering Leo, your sign, until July 28th. So it's going to spend two and a half weeks, uh, yeah, about three weeks in your sign. And um, what was I going to say? So Mercury rules communication. So uh, Leos, you're going to uh, express uh, words from your heart, okay? Because uh, Leo rules heart and Mercury is communication. So you're going to speak from your heart. Uh, it, you're gonna it's like your speech is gonna be more like directed uh, at yourself like about yourself okay yeah and there's nothing bad about that um, so yeah um, it's gonna be easier to express yourself um, yeah you can expect to write or text more around this time um, and then finally on July 17th we have a new moon in cancer on the 24th degree of cancer um, so it's gonna happen in your 12th house and that signals that uh, you need to rest. Twelfth house is the house of rest. Uh, it's the ha house that is like, it's a sign that is like right before yours, right before your birthday season. Um, that means like uh, the sun has been like traveling through all of your houses and now it's in your last house. So the sun is like tired and now you should let yourself rest, okay? Recharge your batteries, get your beauty sleep and be ready for your birthday season uh, so yeah it's a good time to go on a vacation okay take a break uh, leos i know you guys work hard uh, so uh, let yourself relax uh, after this new moon uh, so um, and those of you who have planets around uh, the 24th degree of cancer you might feel this uh, new moon let's say uh, you have Venus on the 24th degree of cancer then yeah you're gonna feel something new regarding your venus matters like um your money your aesthetics okay yeah but for other uh, leos you might not really feel this so much but uh, as i said use this energy to like relax and uh, go on vacation if you can um so uh, what was i gonna say this new moon is gonna be 
uh, making an opposition to Pluto on the 29th degree of uh, Capricorn. So yeah, uh, workhouse, rest house again. Mm, so maybe you want to go on a vacation, but your work uh, it, it does not allow you. There's like too much work. But like still, try to find time to uh, relax. Uh, this new moon is not completely bad. It's gonna be making a trine to Neptune in Pisces, okay? Uh, so it's gonna act like a pressure valve uh, for the opposition. Uh, and so it can give like imagination. Um, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, imagination, daydreaming, uh, creativity, spirituality. So if you go on a vacation, try to go to a place uh, by the water because Neptune rules uh, water, the oceans, okay? Uh, you might feel recharged by uh, the ocean or maybe simply by a pool, yeah, and go swimming. And then like, um, it's, o it's also gonna make a sextile, uh, the new moon is gonna make a sextile to Uranus. Yeah, so Uranus is like uh, the planet of innovation, technology. Yeah, so uh, I guess social media is gonna provide like a good distraction uh, at this time um so yeah that is it for this new moon um next oh uh, what i also wanted to say is uh the new moon uh even though it's receiving a bad aspect from pluto uh, you're not gonna feel this much uh, it's not gonna be that intense uh, as intense as it sounds because a uh, new moon uh if you look at the beach around this time, there's little water uh, on the beach because the water is uh, like low water, low tide. So yeah, it's like same uh, in our bodies. Like, uh, yeah, we're not gonna be that emotional. Uh, they're not, it's not like a full moon. And this new moon is not a solar eclipse. So don't expect like some major new beginnings. No, it's gonna be like some minor new beginning. It's gonna be like, uh, you're gonna get some news, uh, some message. Um, I don't know, like uh, some decision, some announcement, okay? Um, like I said, it can be a good time to go on a vacation. Um, so, let's see. Um, on July 17th, uh, on the same day as uh, the new moon, we have a no north node entering Aries, okay? Uh, so, it's gonna enter your uh, really positive house. Uh, it's gonna enter the house of Sagittarius. Uh, so. Mm, ninth house is the house of traveling, faraway places, foreigners, uh, exotic um, things, uh, higher education, uh, what else? Um, so yeah, higher education, so uh, all the fun things. Um, so some Leos, uh, this year and next year, uh, you might start going to college. Uh, some of you might decide to get your master's degree. Some of you might apply for a PhD. Some of you might be graduating from those things, getting your diploma. Okay, uh, so starting from uh, July 17th until next year. Uh, you might uh, travel somewhere new for the first time. Yeah, uh, and so it's a very positive house. And so the focus uh, for the past year and a half was on your career. Uh, you might have you must have made some uh, major progress in your career okay so now you can enjoy all the progress that you made and go on traveling okay with the increased salary now you can afford to travel to a new place yeah that can be the interpretation and now what i wanted to mention is north node takes 18 years to travel uh like to get to the same sign to come back to the same sign so that means uh, the last time north node was in aries was 18 years ago uh, in 2005 and 2006. try to think back like uh, what happened back then did you travel somewhere new for the first time okay you probably did uh yeah so the the arrival of north node now in your ninth house means you're gonna travel somewhere new again okay it's not gonna be like you're gonna go to the place you vacationed at before no you're gonna go somewhere new it should be exciting like my mom is a leo and i remember back in 2005 she traveled uh, to some really beautiful country for the first time yeah and i'm excited for her this time as well because like uh, she's gonna travel again um so yeah um now uh on july 22nd the venus stations retrograde on the 28th degree of leo dear leos 
uh, Venus is through, uh, the retrograding in your sign. So yeah, uh, those Leos who were born uh, around August uh, 21st, 22nd, 20th, you guys are gonna feel this uh, station retrograde the most. Uh, I mean, all Leos are gonna feel this. And so, what I wanted to mention is, um, so yeah, uh, your first house. First house is your aesthetics, your style, uh, the way you express yourself, you, your personality. Uh, you're gonna be reevaluating those things, okay? Uh, maybe like and what I would say is like uh, since Venus rules your style and first house is your uh, aesthetics I would say don't make impulsive haircuts don't get that gross bangs impulsive okay because uh, you might uh, end up regretting it uh, when Venus turns direct yeah don't make radical changes to your style mm, don't dye your hair like don't cut it too short or something like that no uh, so instead, try to uh, take this time to reevaluate. Um, I would say uh, don't go shopping after uh, July 22nd. Don't go shopping because uh, when you are not going to like uh, the things that you bought after Venus turns direct uh, in late August. Okay, You're going to regret it. So don't waste money on clothes. Um, instead, this can be a good time to like uh, buy uh, used things because uh, those who will be selling those things they don't know the value the true value of the things that they are selling yeah so it can be a good time to like buy used things i'm gonna talk more in detail about this in july i'm gonna make a separate video for venus retrograde okay so those are basically the major uh, things of, um, it, i can tell in this video and on the same day venus uh, turns retrograde the sun enters leo yay um so, um, yeah, the focus now uh, is on you, on your personality. The spotlight is on you, all the lights are on you. If the sun had been in your 12th house, in your isolation house, now uh, the focus is on you. So it's time to shine. Uh, yeah, um, celebrate your birthday, celebrate uh, life, have fun, okay? Uh, on July 23rd, uh, we have the exact square of the makes a square to Pluto as soon as it enters um, uh, as soon as it enters Aries yeah so there's gonna be some tension between your travel plans and your work again so there might be like some con uh, schedule conflict uh, I guess yeah but since uh, North Node is not like an actual planet it's like a point um, you might not feel it that much unless you have planets uh, around those degrees like uh, late degrees of Aries um, or late degrees of Capricorn yeah some of you might have moon or Mars uh, or some other planet uh, or maybe your rising sign around those degrees okay so yeah uh, and then on July 25th we have the first quarter moon uh, meaning you will start seeing the results uh, the tangible results of the uh, seeds that were planted on the new moon on July 17th well, yeah uh, symbolically speaking or metaphorically speaking uh, yeah because a uh, new moon even though it's like a new energy new start the moon is still not visible okay uh, yeah it was still in the planting stage but now with the first quarter moon you will start seeing the results a little bit yeah uh, with the major culmination being the full moon next month uh, so yeah and then on at the end of July on July 28th uh, Mercury enters Virgo your second house and uh, it's gonna be in there until October 4th so an extended stay in your second house uh, because it's gonna go retrograde in your Mania house uh, in August yeah but I'm gonna talk more about that in August so yeah Leos this is it for July uh, as I said, we have a favorable uh, full moon uh, in, on July 3rd, so use that energy for like um, partying, I guess, like uh, on July 4th. Uh, it's not a bad full moon. Um, what else? Um, a new moon is going to happen in your uh, 12th house, so take that time to rest. Uh, go on a vacation if you can uh, if you cannot go on a vacation on some weekend uh, go to a spa salon uh, yeah get your beauty sleep so to speak uh, to, in order to get ready for your birthday season uh, yeah and then north node enters your ninth house this is exciting uh, so yeah uh, you might travel 
to some new place uh, for the first time this year or next year, okay? Uh, and uh, Venus is gonna go retrograde in your sign uh, starting from July 22nd. Um, uh, so yeah, July 22nd, Venus is gonna be retrograde for like uh, 40 days. Um, uh, and I, for I think I forgot to mention this. Uh, Venus uh, turns retrograde in the same sign every eight years. Uh, that means the last time Venus was retrograde in Leo was in August 2015. Try to think back, like what happened in August 2015? Like what were you reevaluating? Like uh, you, in terms of your style, like um, like your personality, I guess, or, or your like something Venusian, okay, Venus stuff. Uh, try to think back. What were you reevaluating? Those themes are gonna repeat again, but it's not gonna be the same because the outer planets are gonna be making a different, uh, um, different aspects this time. So, for example, uh, in 2015, Venus was making a trine to Uranus, but this time Venus is gonna be making a square to Uranus. You get the idea. So yeah, uh, this is it for July. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure you subscribe. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys in August, okay? So again, happy birthday, de dear Leos. I wish you guys all the best. Uh, you guys are uh, little sunshines in our lives, okay? Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for being awesome. <laughs>